Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a brand new season of Big Time Sports. That's right, high school and college football are back, and we invite you to join us every week as we talk to a different high school and college football program around the Stark County area, all the way down to Tuscarawas County. And as usual, our leadoff school every year now, it's almost tradition. We bring in head coach John Fankhauser from Walsh University and coach, Welcome to the program. I know it's football season when I see you every year. Yeah, it certainly kicks it off. We don't need the Hall of Fame to tell us it's football season. Right. We have this, this show, and it's been a pleasure to be on here for probably now almost 10 years, it seems exactly. like. So exactly. it's been great. Yeah, I looked at your, uh, your record last year, kind of deceiving, because then I took a look. You had a three-point loss at Kentucky Westland, lost by two to Ohio Dominican, lost by seven to Northwood. You put those three on the win column, you have a pretty good year. Thanks for reminding me about that, Joe. Uh, no, it's been it was a it was a good year. We we had a lot of growing pains with yeah. the, a very young team. Um, you know, you go back to the Kentucky Wesleyan game. We had a chance to ice the game at the end and and didn't get the first down, and then uh, dropped an interception in the end zone to uh, almost seal it. And they kept yeah. the ball and ended up scoring with it. Which, if we had replay, I don't know if it's a score, but that's a whole another issue. And then uh, missed a long field goal at the end of the Ohio uh, Ohio Dominican game. And yeah, we were right there in a lot yeah. of different spots. And if we could have flipped those over, that would have been a real, uh, real momentum builder for us. Exactly. This is your 26th year at Walsh, and I think you're starting your seventh year as head football coach. You've seen a lot of change over there. You're playing home games on campus right now. The program continues, I think, to get better each year. Yeah, it, it, when when I first got to Walsh, I never thought I'd be there this long. <laughs> uh, but I've been really lucky to have been there and move up through the ranks. And uh, yeah, there's been a ton of changes on our yeah. campus. And it's exciting for our kids to be able to play on campus. It's now going into year three for right. us on campus. And it, uh, we've created a lot of different um, traditions on our campus and it's continually growing as we go. Exactly. You know, taking a look at the upcoming season, we already talked about last year, but now you've got a new group. Although you have good retention, you said you brought in about 60 freshmen last year, good retention. You're starting to retain those players, which is a, a plus for the program. Yeah, it's, it's uh, good for a football program to be old. Yeah. And we're starting to get to that point where we're getting older and older and older. We have a bigger senior class uh, this year than we had last year. Uh, our nucleus still is probably in our juniors and sophomores as far as our big, big classes. But uh, we've been able to keep our guys together and uh, get them a little bit smarter, get them a little bit stronger and all those things. And that'll help it hopefully in the win column. Hey, you mentioned you're about a week and a half, two weeks away from starting practice. As you look at your team on paper, what, what do you think the strength of this group is right now? Uh, I would say right now our our strengths are one offensively. I think we're going to be pretty sound up front. Uh, we have a good nucleus of guys that have got a lot of playing time in our offensive line, our tight ends, in that area. I think we'll have some good skill guys. We got a couple seniors in the skill area. Um, our quarterbacks got to get older yeah. and get more experience as we go, but that will continually happen. We have a good set of running backs. We're, we're decently solid there. Uh, defensively, I think we have a good secondary, especially in the back half uh, at safety. I think we're very strong in that sense. We're probably a little bit young at corner, um, but we have some guys that have played. Um, and then our linebackers are probably our, our next area yeah. that is really strong with our seniors with uh, Cam Holabaugh and uh, Rocco Iacino. I think Holabaugh was what defensive player of the year yep. in the conference, and he's a local guy. I think we're up in the Warren area. Yep, Warren so JFK. he's back. And expect maybe the best from him this year. Yes, I expect a lot from him. Uh, he's been playing a lot of baseball. He's a, a dual sport at Walsh, which is a cool thing to have. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I expect a lot from him and Rocco. Rocco's been a, a very solid guy. But our senior class has been a group that has really bonded together and bought into the Walsh culture and the things that we're trying to build and get changed. Right now, let's take a look at the early season schedule for Walsh University. The coach talks a little bit more about what he expects to happen this year. And coach, you open up the season, I think, on the road, a Thursday night game, August 29th, down at West Liberty. You uh, then go to Wheeling, come back uh, to go to Kentucky Wesley, and then at home to Thomas Moore. So what, you got three straight on the road to begin the season? No, we, uh, right? we start on the road at West Liberty. Okay. Um, that's been a really unique, uh, kind of a fun uh, game that we've gotten rekindled since the old NAIA days, uh, playing on a Thursday night, kicking yeah. the season off, uh, that sort of thing. And it's a, it's a local game for us, really. We, we know a lot of their players. They know of a lot of our players and those things. Uh, then we have Wheeling at home. Okay. Um, and that was a game we just picked up. Uh, and then we go uh, Kentucky Westland, 
uh, Thomas Moore, Lake Erie, and then into the rest of our conference. Talk about the GMAC, Coach, because uh, you're a long time in the uh, conference with the schools up in the north, and now you're in the GMAC. You're a member of that league. What about the type of football fans can expect this year out of the GMAC? Well, I'll say this. The GMAC is a little bit different from the old GLIAC days. Yeah. Uh, it's a smash-mouth football conference. It's okay. a conference you have to be ready to play every weekend. And you know, the, t the teams in our conference like to put line the ball up and come right at you. There's not a lot of spread teams. Okay. Uh, there's not a lot of, um, we're kind of a hybrid three-man front, but most of the teams in our league are a four-man front, so they're going to stop the run. So it's one of those type of tough leagues that you got to be ready to play in each week. And, uh, you know, we were going through the conference rankings the other day a little bit and talking about different schools and who do we think – has a chance to win it, and and really anybody in the in the top eight really has a chance to win the league. You know, you get into October and those cold weather games. You better be able to run the football. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can throw it early when the weather's warm, but you got to be able to run it when it gets a little cold, don't you? Yeah, those receivers they get cold hands and start dropping things. And uh, <laughs> um, yeah, we have to be able to run the football, and that's always really been a Walsh staple. Uh, there's been years we've been better at it than we have been in different years, and but and I'll say this: the years we've been better at running the football, our record's been better. Yeah. So that it. it correlates. Coach, both of us go back to the days of Jim Dennison. I was with Jim up at the University of Akron. You've known him forever. Mm -hmm. And uh, he ran the football. I got that I formation running that tailback and that ISO. He lived on that. Oh, he lived on it. And it didn't matter if the defense called it out. He was still going to run it right at him. <laughs> <laughs> you're exactly right. You know, we talked before the show about local recruiting and the great job you're doing of keeping a lot of the local Stark County, Tuscarawas County, Akron area kids at home playing for Walsh University. Yeah, we've really, one of the things that we've tried to do at Walsh is really have a 50 mile radius around Walsh, which is for us, Tuscarawas County, Wayne County, uh, Carroll. Uh, Mahoning, yeah. you know, up into Summit and all those, that area, if we can do a good job in that area, we're going to have a good football team. And then we fill in around the state and, and out of state a little bit as well uh, with that. And anymore, you got to fill in with a little bit of the transfer portal as well. But yeah. we've really done a, tried to do a good job and focus that Stark County in that area, the county surrounding uh, Stark County. Uh, recruiting wise and we've done a pretty good job at that. Yeah, a lot of people are saying with the NIL and uh, the E1s and 2s and not, not recruiting as many high school kids. Is that filtered on down now? Are you starting to see a little bit more of quality players you can recruit out of high school as opposed to maybe a few years ago or not? Yes, for sure. I think the the year before this year was a you saw a big change because of how many people entered the portal and yeah. were recruiting out of the portal and it left a lot of high school seniors kind of Hey, I was getting recruited by a Mac school or a FCS uh, level school, yeah. but now they're going to take a transfer portal guy. Now I'm open. So we've been able to trickle that Great. into uh, our recruiting a little bit as well. Um, it's it's really helped. And I'll say, you know, unfortunately, there's been a lot of D2 schools or a few D2 schools that recruit our area that have closed, uh, yes. stopped football or whatever. So that's helped us as well. Sure. We've got three segments left in the program. And, Coach, you brought three of your players. Why don't you tell us who you brought over today? Well, first I brought Steve Gillen from Tusky Valley, a tight end. Uh, he's going into his fifth year, I believe. I think he was here last uh, year. He was here last year because okay. we thought he was going to be a senior. Then he tore up his elbow and yeah. decided to get redshirted and, and come back. So he's coming back. Robbie Page from Maslin uh, High School is, is uh, starting se senior uh, safety for us and has done a great job. And then Garrett Kashner, a punter, uh, who is going to be a senior also from Newark High School. Okay. Coach Stay Put, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll start meeting these guys that hope to put Walsh on the map this year with their football program. So don't go away. Big time sports. Sports is back right after this. Rev up your excitement at Ferris Chevrolet Toyota, home to the 2024 Chevy Blazer. Discover the epitome of automotive excellence with us. Step into the driver's seat of the Blazer, where innovation meets adventure. Explore our showroom and let our expert team guide you to your dream ride. Don't just imagine the journey. Live it with Ferris Chevrolet Toyota. Visit us today on the Wabash in New Philadelphia or online at thinkferris.com. Think Ferris. You're only as good as your people. And what we've done here is we've created a culture where people flourish. We don't want it to be a transaction. We want it to be something where there's a consultative approach, a relationship, that allows us to, to really, one, ensure our customer the right way, but then two, to let them 
understand the value of getting to work with us. It's an extreme amount of satisfaction for this team that we have right now. We've developed a team that is solely based on relationships. Uh, Mr. Derek, can I talk to you for a second? What's going on? My best friend needs a lot of help, and I tried to talk to her about it, but she won't talk to me anymore. Well, I kind of told her that you were my trusted adult. <laughs> is that okay? Absolutely. We all may need a little help, and it's even more important that we don't hesitate. Okay, welcome back to week number one of Big Time Sports. Glad you joined us because we're going to be with you every week at this time to talk college and high school football. Next week, the Green Bulldogs will be here to talk about their uh, year and their year coming ready for the Federal League. They've got a great program at Green, and Coach Geis will be here to talk about that. But right now, we're talking Walsh University football, head coach John Fankhauser. And, Coach, before we meet uh, your players, I know there's a lot of people watching down in Tuscarawas County that remember your days down there, right? That's been that long ago. They're dated, then. If they're, they're getting older. <laughs> it's been a while, right? Yes, it has. <laughs> exactly. Yes, it has. Hey, you brought a young guy with you right now, and uh, tell us about him. Steve Gilland, uh, uh, senior tight end for us, uh, redshirted last year, um, got injured and, and decided that he wanted to continue his playing career and, and came back for this year's senior year. He's been a great leader for us. He's from Tuskegee Valley High School uh, locally here, um, but he's been a great leader. He's done a lot of good things on our program, and we expect big things from him this fall. Well, welcome back. We had you on the program last year, and uh, lo and behold, two games into the season, you have the injury, and now you're back for another year. Tell us how disappointing that was. I know football players work st extremely hard this summer. I mean, you got that, that first game pinned on your bulletin board. You can't wait. Two games in, you go down. How disappointing was that, and how did you battle back mentally? Yeah, it was very disappointing. Um, it was a long summer of grinding, getting the body ready to yeah. really uh, push, the, push the limits of what I was trying to do that year. But um, the disappointment was more or less on myself. But uh, I bounced back real quick, trying to uh, more or less uh, – put myself in the coach's role, yeah. uh, take lead of the tight end group and get the next guy ready. I was going to ask you about that. I'm not sure if coaching is in your future, what you plan to do after graduation, but you got a taste of it last year after you went down kind of mentoring those other tight ends and looked at the offense. How much fun was that part of it? Uh, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. I still got to travel and everything. Sure. Still be that guy for the younger guys. Uh, a guy named Braden Eller, he's below me. He's only a year below me. He still knows everything. So. Uh, it was more or less uh, me and him taking control of the young guys and uh, getting them going and right in, going in the right direction. How often did you see things during the game? You're traveling with the team. How often did you see things and go back to the coaches and say, hey, take a look at this. I think we're going to be able to do this. Oh, it was all the time, honestly. And more or less, I was more or less watching the tight end room, yeah. you know, making sure the tight ends were doing, watch the play before it gets singled in. And uh, as soon as I know the play, I'm locked in on the tight end, make sure they're ready to go. Yeah, coach said that uh, G-Max is kind of a smash mouth football like a mini Big Ten. I mean, there's no surprise as the teams come right at you. Do you like that style of football? you like more wide open or give us your thoughts on that? Um, I would say I like it a little more hybrid. I still like touching the ball a little bit, sure. you know what I mean? But uh, <laughs> I, uh, I still like running the ball, honestly. Our offense is schemed through the tight end, man. It's it's real good. We're more or less uh, lead blocker, kind of. Yeah. But I still like running the rock. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, but I also still like having the ball in my hands. So what have you done this summer? You had a year off. Now you come back. Uh, you got a young quarterback. He's coming back. Have you kind of established a little chemistry with him yet? What have you done maybe during June and July? Uh, it's been a lot of connection through him. I know he's been real, uh, working real hard. Uh, he actually works out real ne uh, near me at a uh, facility close to my hometown. Um, a lot, mainly uh, just getting my body right, getting the legs under me, trying to grow my upper body so uh, injuries like that don't happen anymore. Yeah. And uh, getting the body ready to push those big guys around in the interior. Yeah, we talked to the coach in segment one about his ability to bring in local kids from the area. You're a local guy from down in Tusky Valley. I did a game there a couple of years ago, first time I've been down there. You almost feel like you're out in the mountains with that stadium oh, down yeah. in there. But how much fun was it just coming up the road a little bit to play at uh, Walsh? Oh, it's really good. I mean, at Tusky Valley, it felt like more of a family. And honestly, the tra transition to Walsh, it was no different. Yeah. I mean, this is a family here. It was a family down there. And honestly, being this close to Walsh, having my actual interior family was phenomenal because they they really don't get to miss out on much. Yeah, tell us about the academic side to being at Walsh. You're there as a student athlete, a football player. Tell us about your major and what you hope to do after graduation. Uh, I'm actually a business management major. Uh, my family owns a business down in Dover, Ohio. Okay. Um, I've 
want to go into that. I actually did my internship there, and uh, I plan to uh, go there after I uh, graduate and grow that. You've been around the GMAC now. Toughest place to play in the GMAC. You get on that bus and we're, we're heading south. Uh, where's some of those tough spots to play? Or they're um, all tough. They, they're all pretty tough, man. Everyone brings it every <laughs> week, I would agree. Um, I, uh, I say the main are probably not south, it's more or less north. You go to Ashland, Tiffin, yeah. uh, OD, uh, ODU south, but uh, yeah. those teams bring it every week, man. There you you got to go. be ready. Yeah. Well, stay healthy this year. Looking forward to watching you play at tight end. Thanks for coming over again. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you, sir. Coach, stay put. We've got uh, two more players yet to go. We're back with more big time sports after this timeout. <laughs> Rev up your excitement at Ferris Chevrolet Toyota, home to the 2024 Chevy Blazer. Discover the epitome of automotive excellence with us. Step into the driver's seat of the Blazer, where innovation meets adventure. Explore our showroom and let our expert team guide you to your dream ride. Don't just imagine the journey. Live it with Ferris Chevrolet Toyota. Visit us today on the Wabash in New Philadelphia or online at thinkferris.com. Ride into the future to win great prizes. Can you see into the Sarda crystal ball? Guess how we'll be innovating and adding new services to make your Sarda experience better than ever. Try your luck with the What's Next at Sarda contest at sardanext.com. One grand prize winner will win free bus rides for six months. Runners up will win great Sarda merchandise like a Bluetooth speaker water bottle, backpack, and tumbler. And don't worry, they're all multiple choice questions. All part of Sarda 25. Happy Sardiversary. At Friends and Family Credit Union, you, the members, are the owners. Our friendly staff serves over 11,000 members, assisting with their financial needs and bettering their lifestyles. Hi, I'm Gina, President and CEO of Friends and Family Credit Union, where we provide loans, savings, checking, and other financial services to anyone who lives, works, worships, or attends school in Stark County. Are you looking for something different? Stop in today to become a friend of the family. Okay, welcome back. We are talking Walsh University football as we get ready for 2024 high school and college football. Quick reminder, Walsh, their home opener. They'll be on the road the 29th at West Liberty. Come back for a September 7th game with Wheeling. That'll be a 7 o'clock kickoff on campus at Walsh. Hope to see a lot of fans over there for that home opener. Coach, before we meet uh, another player, tell us about your coaching staff. I know you're proud of those guys. Yeah, we just, we've had a lot of changeover this, this past year with our coaching staff, but we got a good group of guys. Uh, Adam Furback will return. Uh, he had left us for a little while. He's coming back as our uh, defensive coordinator. Um, hired Raphael Johnson from Canton South originally, but he's uh, coming back as our D-line coach. Hired Jeremy Hamilton from Notre Dame College as our wide receivers coach, and uh, got a full staff together. It's fun to have everybody at the table and get new ideas. Exactly, that, that's good. Tell us about this young man to your left. I think he comes comes in that special teams group, right? Yes, and it's one thing I probably should have mentioned in the first part of it, that I feel really good about our special teams, and they have a lot of chances to win us games next year, and, and Garrett is a guy that's put a lot of work in. He is a good leader on our football team, and he's also a really good punter. So he's done a lot of good things for us. Derek, welcome to the program. Before I talk to you, I want to go back to with Coach Van Kaiser and Jim Dennison. When I was with Jim, he always said, those kickers and punters, they're a little different group. Are they coach or not? Oh, they're a different group, and, and Cash is kind of our leader of, of our kickers, and uh, they do some different things and, and have a lot of fun, but I appreciate these guys because they, when they get to practice, they yeah. work hard, and they, they put their work in and, and really try to perform on game day. Okay, welcome to the program. Have you always been a kicker and punter? Tell us about the maybe the guy put the football in your hands for the first time and said you're going to be a punter. <laughs> So going back to my freshman year of high school, a guy named Mike Capacci, who was my high school coach at the time, um, who's actually from Youngstown, Cheney, he was like, hey, sure. I was a soccer player. He's like, hey, why don't you come out and try to kick some balls? Um, most of my buddies were on the football team, so I decided why not and gave it a shot, and it ended up working out. When did you know that you could be pretty good at playing the football? I mean, you put the thing in your, your hands, you kick it, maybe it goes off to the left or right. When did you finally figure it out and say, hey, you know, I could be pretty good at this? So working with a guy named Jed Quackenbush, who is also from Newark and played four years at Ohio Dominican, he uh, kind of guided me and showed me the ropes of how to kick the football. And through working really hard, he kind of gave me that inspiration that, hey, I can do this. Yeah. 
you know, being able to punt the ball, have kind of positional kicking, when you put it inside the five, inside the 10, is that something you constantly work on? And how tough is it? If you're watching a football game, the fans in the stands say, why did he kick it in the end zone? Why did he kick it inside the 10 or 15? Tell us how that works and how tough it is. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely not easy. It, it's definitely <laughs> something that takes a lot of work. Um, during practice, this is something that I constantly improve at is being very critical. Like if the ball goes in the end zone, it's no good. If the ball is outside the 10, it's no good. So just being very critical about where, where those balls are landing and um, trying to get the best out of my kicks. What about the coordination on the snapper? Do you guys work on that on a daily basis? You, have, you like the same snapper. Where do you like to receive the ball? So we had a guy named Cam Miser last year, and he was a, a guy that came in as a tight end and ended up getting a few concussions, and the doctor luckily gave him the clearance to be a long snapper. So it was very lucky to have him on our sideline where we were constantly able to work those snaps and work where I like the ball, and I, I like to receive it around my, my belly button or, or higher, and that's yeah. kind of where that was at. Exactly. How many times have you looked over at the coach, you maybe had a designated play, and say, hey, I want you to run the football. If you see something, you know, if they, if they back off and you got some room to run, is there a signal or you do your, your own look or how does that work? You know, that's, that's not something we necessarily really talk <laughs> about. Um, there, it's a gut feeling. It's, you got a, it. it's a gut feeling and I don't know if I have the gut to run that football quite yet. <laughs> he doesn't have the gut to run it, but I'll say this, he's one for one on throwing it. There you go. <laughs> All right. Congratulations. But have a great year. Thanks for coming over. And uh, we'll try and catch a few games this year. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we've got one more segment left. And might as well bring out a Maslin Tiger. They're strutting all over the place after that state championship. So we'll talk to a young man from Washington High School in Maslin right after this. <laughs> Rev up your excitement at Ferris Chevrolet Toyota, home to the 2024 Chevy Blazer. Discover the epitome of automotive excellence with us. Step into the driver's seat of the Blazer, where innovation meets adventure. Explore our showroom and let our expert team guide you to your dream ride. Don't just imagine the journey. Live it with Ferris Chevrolet Toyota. Visit us today on the Wabash in New Philadelphia or online at thinkferris.com. This moment, it's a choice. To find out what you're made of. To own what's in front of you. No matter what that might be. We showed up, we're here. This moment belongs to us right now. Searching for the quality of a nationally recognized Medicare Advantage plan, but seeking the personalized care and service of a local, familiar face? Primetime Health Plan is a top-performing plan with competitive benefits available right here in your community. Whether you call or meet us in person, our local team will be there to help you find quality coverage and care close to home. Call us today or visit us online at www.pthp.com to learn about our 2024 plans. Well, he just joined us on Big Time Sports. We are talking Walsh University football. Coach Frank Hauser is here, and he has one more player left that we'll talk about, and he's a good one, Coach. Why don't you introduce this young man? Yeah, this is Robbie Page. Uh, he's a senior safety for us from uh, Maslin High School, uh, going into, I believe, his fifth year. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you lose track after those COVID guys came through, but uh, he's going into his fifth year, and he's going to have the unique opportunity to lead our football team on defense and also play with his brother. There you go. Well, Robbie, welcome over to uh, Big Time Sports. In that secondary, there's no help behind you. Do, oh, no. do you like that type of pressure, knowing you're the last line of defense? And when did you start playing defensive back? Oh, for sure. Definitely like being the last line of defense. You know, nobody can pass me. But uh, I started playing defensive back, I think, my freshman year. Okay. I was a little chunky growing up. So I was in the linebackers, D-line area. So freshman year. What about the coordination in the secondary? You talk about the coordination on the offensive line. I often thought that at secondary, you got to know where everybody is. You know, no assignment. Somebody breaks down, you're in trouble. Talk about the coordination you guys have developed in that secondary. Oh, the secondary is great. We got, I think, six returning corners that could play yeah. in the game. We got four or five safety that can play in the game. So everybody knows what they're doing. Everybody knows the job and get done well. Tell us about getting ready to uh, 
scout an offense you're going to see on a Saturday night or a Saturday afternoon. What do you look for and what are some of the keys that you look for as far as coverage? I look for uh, quarterback tendencies. See when he hikes the ball, see his cadence when he looks around, when he go back to the ball. Uh, receivers, you just look at releases, see if they're quick release off the line, slow. Uh, and then when they run the ball, you just look at the linemen. <coughs> if the linemen yeah. are run blocking, get down in the run. Anybody's watched any level of football know there's a lot of give and take between receivers and the secondary. A lot of talking going on, maybe a little pointing, a little showmanship. Do you get involved in that or you just kind of play the game and, and let it go where it goes? Uh, uh, get in there, get in the mix a little bit. He's, little gotten, bit too a, he's much. gotten a lot more mature on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and he's go. getting better at that definitely, for sure. Definitely. Exactly. Freshman sophomore year was a little much. How long did it now. take maybe to get over that? Because once you get in that one-on-one -on -one coverage, it's man to man. Right. I mean, he beats you or you beat him. So right. there's a lot of ego involved there. Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. Can't get, you can't <laughs> let him get the best of you. So exactly. you got to talk a little bit. Exactly. What about your, uh, your major at Walsh? What do you hope to do after uh, leaving Walsh University? I'm an education major, so I Great. plan on being a teacher, hopefully coaching as well. Hopefully in the Maslin area too. Great. Yes, of course, sir. I can't let you go without talking about the pride oh, yeah. over in Maslin after that state championship. What, oh, yeah. What's it been like over there since they won it? Well, my little brother was on the <coughs> team. He was a senior last year, That's so right. it, was, it was very special for me seeing him get to play and win it like we all dreamed of, so it was sweet. Exactly. Tell us about uh, maybe the classroom, kind of making sure you get all your classroom work done and then get ready for football. There's a give and take right there. Time management's involved. How do you get it all done? Usually uh, we get it done. We got Monday off. So <coughs> usually I do all my work on Mondays and then you got the rest of the week for film and whatever, recover. Yeah. yeah. How much fun has it been playing close to home or maybe the guys you played with in high school, maybe your family and friends can come over and watch a game when they want to? Oh, it's great. Uh, I get the coaches from my high school still come and watch the games. Fans, my, uh, we had like sideliners back in high school. They come and still watch the games. So it's sweet having good fan support. How much fun is it playing on campus? I mean, that wasn't always the rule oh, yeah. for years. Of course, you're over at Fawcett Stadium. Tom Benson, I would still call it Fawcett Stadium. But what about playing at home right now on campus where the students can be a part of it? Right, my first two years, I think we played at Glen Oak. Not very many students yeah. came to the games, obviously. The drive, <laughs> right. Okay. But now that we're on campus, there's a lot more students that come, great a atmosphere, so it's, it's good. Yeah. yeah. What about taking some of those young defensive back under your wing? I mean, when you came in as a young kid, I'm sure there's some seniors that showed you the ropes. Are there some young defensive backs you've kind of taken under your wing that show a lot of potential right now? Almost definitely. Uh, Marvin Conkle, he's my partner, partner in crime. <laughs> uh, we got Jawan Jackson, Relly, Blood, all those guys. Yeah. yeah. How much fun has it been meeting guys from all over the area? I know there's a lot of local guys mm -hmm. that are playing at Wallace, but you meet guys from all over the state of Ohio, guys coming in from out of the state, right. meeting different uh, different cultures maybe. What's that been like? Oh, it's sweet. Meeting people from uh, Canton guys, Canton guys come. Yeah. Give them a little hard time at first, but they're <laughs> of course. good guys at the end of the day. Of course. Uh, Cleveland guys, everybody's just. Exactly. Yeah. I know you're looking forward to that Thursday night opener, uh, oh, yeah. August 29th. Uh, you got off to a great start last year. I think you won your first two games. So yep. best of luck uh, the rest of the way. Thank you. Thanks for coming over. Coach, here we go. Another season. I know the adrenaline starts flowing about this time yeah. of year because it's about a week, week and a half away before you start practice. Yep, we're about a week, a week and a half away. We report August 3rd and start practice on the 5th, and uh, away we go. Yeah. I say goodbye to my wife. I'll see you at Thanksgiving, <laughs> and then we're, we're off and running. Okay, still fun though, right? Yes, it is. All right, Coach, thanks as always for coming over. Uh, 26 years at Walsh, seventh year as head coach, and get over there and see a game if you can. For Coach Fankhauser, I'm Joe Dunn, back here next week to talk football with the Green Bulldogs. Have a great week, everybody.